we are going to look at a familiar system. This is a predator-prey relationship that was shown as an, as an example from, from section 5.1, where the X describes the prey. And Y describes the predator. Now, our solution will not necessarily be count of animals or number of animals. It'll be a certain unit, like hundreds of thousands of animals, tens of thousands, hundreds of animals, something like that. So it's okay if we end up with decimal amounts in our prey and predator populations. Okay, so we have four steps. We first find all critical points, or all equilibrium points. We first find all equilibrium points. Then we find the general Jacobian and evaluate or form that Jacobian at each of the equilibrium points, analyze it using trace determinant plane. And then finally, we graph the equilibrium points, sketch their linear behavior, and connect the dots, essentially, to get the global behavior. So step one, we set the first salt function equal to zero. Let's see if we can factor something out of it. Uh, I see a two and an x. That gives us two possibilities, x equals zero, or we can think of that as two is equal to three x plus four y. And then we can plug in components and solve for the other one. The other option we have is y prime equal to zero, which sets uh, a common y we can factor out, negative one plus three x equal to zero. Using our factored form, we have two options, either y equals zero or solving for x, x equals one third. So combining these together, it's important that we distinguish the two null clines. Here's a null cline for y prime, here's a null cline for x prime. Now, we cannot choose y equals zero and x equals one third because that only satisfies half of the two null clines. We want to satisfy both, so we choose one value from one, one value from the other, to form all the equilibrium points. First one, which often will be an equilibrium point, is zero, zero. Second one, well, let's see, zero and one third, no, x cannot equal both values, so that doesn't work. How about zero and this condition? Well, if we set y equal to zero, then 3x equals 2. And we get x equals 2 thirds. Like that. And then we look at x equals 1 third and that condition. Here we have 3 times 1 third is 1. So we subtract 1 to give us 1 there and then divide by 4. So there are the three equilibrium points. Those are the only points that don't move globally. Okay, so now we will look at the Jacobian and evaluate at these three equilibrium points. Our f and g are the two functions. Here's f on top, g on the bottom. So we take the x partial across. There's a lot of x's, so let's keep track of all the pieces. We have a 2 minus 6x minus 4y. So that's all in the first entry, one one entry. Then we take the y partial minus 4. Move it over to the right to keep those two separate. 
Then we go down to G. We take the X partial, 3Y. And then we take the Y partial. So there is our general Jacobian. So we evaluate that Jacobian at each of these equilibrium points and analyze it. Two, zero. That should be at negative four x. So we'll check here, take the y partial, negative four x, which makes it zero. Negative one. Okay, well this is diagonal. So we know the eigenvalues are two and negative one. We know the eigenvectors are one zero for the two and zero one for the negative. I'll set my first root to be the negative or lowest value. Its eigenvector is 0, 1, the y-axis direction. So those are the first two things that jumped out at me. Let's also notice that the trace of j is a negative 2, and the determinant of j equals... Oh, sorry, that trace sum is a positive one, and the determinant is a negative two. There's a negative two I was thinking about. This is the one that matters here. It tells us that we have a saddle, which is also pretty clear by having eigenvalues of opposite sign. Okay, at two-thirds for x and zero for y, we knock out all the y terms. So we know I have a zero down here. We have six, or yeah, two minus six times two-thirds. Well, six divided by three is two, so we get two minus four is a negative two there. x is equal to two-thirds, so this times four gives us a negative eight thirds, and down the bottom, negative 1 plus 3 times 2 thirds is a negative 1 plus 2, or positive 1. Now this one's triangular, which means we know the eigenvalues and we know one of the eigenvectors. And again, we have a saddle. Here we have r1 equals a negative 2. Since it's on the, the edge with a 0 below it, we know that's with the eigenvector 1, 0. r2 equals 1. We could find the eigenvector for it, but it's not an easy one. So this is clearly a saddle as well. And we can check the determinant of j is a negative 2. That's enough to show that it's a saddle. Then our last Jacobian is at 1 third for x and 1 quarter for y. And in those, a lot of these problems, we'll start with very simple matrices, diagonal perhaps, then go slightly more complicated, maybe triangle. And then we just go full throttle and end up with a fairly complicated matrix out of it. So let's go a little slower this time. We take 2, and then we subtract 6 times 1 third, so we're subtracting 2. And then we take minus 4 times y, so that's a minus 1. Over on the far right, we have a negative 4 times x, so that's a negative 4 thirds. On the bottom left, we have 3 times y, which is a 3 fourths. And on the far, on the far uh, bottom, left, uh, right bottom, we have a negative 1 plus 3 times 1 third. That's a negative 1 plus 1. So I'll write it again one more time to clear this up. Negative 1, negative 4 thirds, 3 quarters, and 0. 
So it's not diagonal, it's not triangular. Let's check the trace. Negative. So we know that it is either stable or simple. Determinant is a zero minus a negative, so plus three quarters times four thirds. That's one. So the term is positive. Let's check the trace squared of j and four times the determinant of j. Trace squared is one, four times the determinant is four. That is complex. That is a spiral. Sink. So we have a quick uh, small sketch of where we are here. We have a saddle at the origin. We have a saddle at two thirds and zero. And then we have a spiral sink at one third, one quarter, so a little higher. So let me take a minute, race this, so we can draw a better, larger diagram for this graph and analyze the behavior around those equilibrium points, looking for the stable manifolds for these saddles, and then seeing where all the stable or bounded solutions are. Now we'll look at the big picture and graph the analysis that we've done at each of these equilibrium points, the linear or local analysis, to the global behavior and look at how the phase plane then relates to the two solutions for the predator and the prey. So first I've summarized the Jacobian information at each of the equilibrium points. At the first equilibrium point I found both of the eigenvalues, it was diagonal, and the eigenvectors. The second equilibrium point, I found both eigenvalues. Only one of the eigenvectors was obvious. It was triangular. And the third one, when, there, when neither is obvious, I found the trace, the determinant, and I compared and found the trace squared is less than the four determinant of J. So from this, I know the type of behaviors here. We have a spiral sink. Opposite sign, it's a saddle. Opposite sign. Saddle. So we have the predator population on the y axis. That's our y. X is the prey population. We have three equilibrium points, 0, 0, we'll go out to 1 here, so 2 thirds. And then 1 third and 1 quarter, so here let's mark y as 1, 1 half, and 1 quarter. So there is our one third and one quarter mark. Okay, so I'll start with the simplest one, the one we have most information on. That's our saddle. The first eigenvalue, the negative eigenvalue, is moving along the y axis direction. So here is the eigenspace that our stable manifold will converge to. Then we have the unstable eigenspace that corresponds to lambda equals two, or r equals two. That moves along the x-axis, one, zero. So again, keep in your minds, these vectors are x and y. So one, zero is the x direction, zero, one is the y direction. If you think of this in terms of physical, um, in physics we have basis vectors, so this would be the i hat direction, that would be j hat direction. Okay, so let me go to the next simplest case, and that is our second saddle. We know that the stable manifold falls along with the x direction. 
so it converges along this eigenspace line. Now, looking at these two already, we can actually see this, the full stable manifold for this equilibrium point. It starts here, it shoots out straight, it doesn't get pulled up or pulled down because it's being pushed, compressed in both ways, and it falls that direction straight into there. So this is the, one of the two stable manifolds for two-thirds zero. The other one is the curve that's starting out at pause infinity for x, shooting in and shooting right down towards there. Now it may curve a little bit based upon behavior over here, but we know that it converges into that eigenspace. And on this side, we can see exactly it starts linear, ends linear, it'll be linear all the way. Because there's less of it. Now, this stable manifold appears to be along the y axis. We can look a little bit further to see if there's anything else going on here, but it appears that it's separating out behaviors that are tending to the right versus tending to the left. And the other stable manifold for this saddle is down on the rest of the y-axis. So these are the stable manifold, stable manifold for zero to zero. And then we have a stable manifold, another stable manifold coming in and converging to that point. Now, the other eigenvalue one didn't have an obvious direction to go to, but we know a little bit more that we can use information globally to determine directions locally. This point is a spiral sink, which means it'll spiral in. We need to figure out which direction it's spiraling in. Is it going clockwise or counterclockwise? So we look at the other local behaviors around it. We know the full information on this saddle, which means solutions that are off a little bit. We'll go down and shoot across. And you can see that we have counterclockwise motion on one side of this spiral. For us to have uh, a unique solution, which we do based upon um, polynomial functions, they are continuous and their partials are continuous, then the behavior on one side of an equilibrium point should match the behavior on the other. We know this is spiraling around. And so our solutions will spiral in towards that equilibrium point. Now, how does that match up with this point? Well, as you get directions that are spiraling in, we're going to hit some direction where it's being pushed away. There's some point where we have to turn solutions that are coming in away to fit the rest of this spiral. I'm not certain on the angle of that eigenvector without actually computing it. But I know that it'll be pushing up to create a angle or a turn similar to this one. We have coming down and push away. We need to have another coming in, pushing away. It could be straight up. It's entirely possible. It could even be tilted a little bit to the right. But it's going to be propelling solution curves to move in that counterclockwise direction around our stable equilibrium point. Now, what about solutions over here? 
that are coming in, they're being ramped up. It splits a little bit. Well, let's see. If this continues going, what's going to happen to it? Well, it's going to reach a point where we get closer and closer to this curve, which is pulling down. And we're still going to return and spiral and spiral and spiral until we get to that point. Now, I don't know how tight the spirals are. It's possible they go to the point a little bit quicker than I drew them, or possible they take longer to get to that point. That's based upon the eigenvalue, which I didn't calculate. That's okay. I still know that there's going to be oscillations, and their oscillations will diminish eventually. So, here is our phase plane let's, uh, that we drew. Now let's look at an example of the phase plane that is calculated with p-plane. So switching gears a little bit. Plugged in the equation up top. I'm going to look at it almost at zero on each side, but I want to be able to see where those pieces are. I can graph the null clines first to show me where the uh, where the equilibrium points exist based upon the intersections of these null clines. So, for example, I have a, two red null clines. So this point right here is not an equilibrium point because it's the same color null clines. Over here we have a red and a yellow, so that's the intersection of two separate null clines, so that's x prime and y prime equal to zero. That's our origin, um, our saddle at the origin. Then we have, an, this one is not one, because that's two yellows. This one is an equilibrium point because it's the intersection of the two, x prime equals zero and y prime equals zero. That's our two thirds. And then finally we have another intersection. That's the coexistence equilibrium point. And we can see some spiral behavior around it. So let's look at some solutions that push along these curves. If we start with the solution near zero. Oh, look at that. So it's actually a pretty, um, it, it, it goes in towards zero, uh, into that equilibrium point very quickly. If we go up a little bit, in a little bit, it converges quite rapidly. So there's, uh, f we can think of that as a, um, an underdamped system that's close to critically damped. It's not oscillating much. It's oscillating a little bit. And if we track this up higher, we can see curves that kind of curve in, spiral in very quickly. Now, If we graph really close, we should be able to see the line of the eigenvector. So if we zoom in right here, we have the direction of the unstable eigenvector from the saddle, which is separating behavior, but that behavior is coming together and converging very rapidly into the point. So mine went around a couple of times before it got there. This one uh, damps much, has a much stronger damping. And then we have the behavior outside the feasible region. And inside again, outside, inside again. Okay, so now that we have an idea of the behavior of the phase plane overall, and how it relates to the example we drew. Let's look at graphing the solutions and compare those solutions. So let me start out first with a high value in both x and y. And we get some oscillations here again, x is the prey and y is the predator. As the predator y goes up, the prey will diminish because they're being eaten to a point that diminishes the, the predator. Once the predator population decreases enough and the prey population will come back up and we get this cyclic behavior. Now notice 
that it's heavily damped. It doesn't cycle for very long. And so we have a little bit of a cycle and then less cycle, and then we are converging to a coexistence, a stable coexistence equilibrium point. This is the one where we, um, well, it's one third on X and one quarter on Y in terms of the units for the prey and predator. But notice that these curves are what we would predict with an oscillatory system that was damped. Damped oscillations. They oscillate independently and then converge to a value. Now they're not converging to zero, they're converging to some other value. And that value is uh, balanced between the two of them. And when we have that equilibrium balance, they no longer oscillate. Okay, so now let's step back and look at the face plane again and think about what this face, face plane tells us about the predator prey system as we modeled it. Well, looking at P plane, we can see in the first quadrant all solutions will converge to this point, the coexistence equilibrium point, as long as x is positive and y is positive. Now, if x or y were zero, then we're on either the y-axis, the positive y-axis, or the positive x-axis. And both of those are stable manifolds. One's a stable manifold for the zero, zero saddle, and one's a stable manifold for the two-thirds zero saddle which means that even when one of, the, one of the populations is zero, we still will converge to an equilibrium point. So every point in the full first quadrant, every possible initial population for this system will either converge to coexistence if there are both animals present, or converge to zero if there's no prey, or converge to two-thirds of the prey units if there's no predators. Those are the three cases based upon this model. Okay. So, a lot of what we've been doing is trying to condense the information that we've amassed from solving linear systems all the way up to solving nonlinear systems in ways where we don't have to go as in-depth and in particular piece, we, we aren't actually solving any of these equations, but we are finding where they can be solved. And at those points, we are sketching similar uh, qualitative behavior that describes the kind of solution we could get if we solved it all the way back like in chapter four. So we're holding back, not going as in depth as we used to, but going wider, going broader and looking at how all these local solutions, and local behaviors can connect together to form a global solution that we technically cannot solve. We can graph it. We can use an, a numerical method like Euler's method to, to estimate values along it, but we can more easily sketch its behavior and fairly effective approximation using some of these tools, like the trace determinant, to understand the eigenvalues without actually calculating. Using the patterns in the matrix. If they're diagonal, we have eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If they're triangular, we have eigenvalues and at least one eigenvector. And using the information that's readily available and readily accessible to us. And if we're using technology, we can calculate those eigenvalues and eigenvectors and use those informations to further our analysis to see exactly what the angle is of those eigenvectors, see how tight, based upon the um, imaginary component of the eigenvalue, we spiral it around. Okay, so that wraps up our analysis using these global um, equilibrium points with local behavior, where we have these saddle points that effectively are only stable along very small curves but then can connect together, create global stability. Mm -hmm.